Hello. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm just glad to be in God's house today with God's people, uh, worshiping the one true God. He is the truth, and that's why we worship Him today. And I'm excited to be here. I hope you are too. Uh, a few announcements coming up, some things coming up in our church family, in our church life. Have the youth Sunday school breakfast this morning at 10 a.m. And that's for 6th through 12th grade. Okay, this is for youth. But I don't see any of y'all showing up over there. We're hungry. Okay, just, just for youth this morning. But uh, then we'll have the uh, youth car wash fundraiser. It's going to be on April 24th from 8 a.m. to noon. And all the uh, proceeds, benefits, the youth camp. So uh, make sure you're here for that. You have a student who's going to uh, youth camp. Hey, the blood drive once again. It's going to be Sunday, April 25th from 7.30 a.m. to noon. We'll have a baby shower uh, for Lauren and Justin. That's going to be on April 25th from 2 to 4 p.m. And they're also registered at Amazon and Target. Mother's Day is coming up and child dedication. It's going to be on Sunday, May 9th, 9 a.m. And this is all in the bulletin. If you don't have one, they're right back at that table back there. It's going to be at May 9th at 9 a.m. Um, sign up for your child parent dedication on the Connect card or call the church office number. And graduation is coming up. Can you believe it? Already almost summer again. Students are graduating. Graduation recognition service Sunday, May, 6, May 16th at 9 a.m. So that's coming up pretty soon, May 16th at 9 a.m. And that's all we have this morning. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to worship God. You know, he loves when we praise him. He loves we, when we come to him. We can boldly approach his throne of grace today. We can come before the one true God today. Let's pray as we go to worship and the reading of his word this morning. Lord, I thank you for bringing us here today. I just thank you for being God. I thank you for being sovereign. I thank you for being Lord over all. Uh, you meet every need. You help us when we're hurting. You lift us up when we're discouraged. God, uh, you are good to us. And we praise you this morning. We come to you and worship God. God, help us remember who we are worshiping. The one true God. As we read your word, God, I pray that the spirit will move. That we won't just sit there and not change, God. That we would change when we hear your word today. Be with us today, God. We are your people. We are your church. Come and meet with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing today? Good, good. All right, y'all stand and worship with us this morning. Sing victory in Jesus.
and verses 10 through 12, and we're going to frame the fight this morning, get an understanding of, of what it means when we say spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12, the Bible says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the uh, cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual foes of evil in the heavenly places. We're in a battle. And, and, and listen, it is awesome to get saved. Ain't it good to be saved? Ain't it good to know that, hey, I, I'm a believer. I know Jesus. I, I have a, eternal life in heaven. And he says, I want, to stay, I want you to have abundant life on earth. But friend, the moment you give your life to Jesus, you will enter the battlefield. And, and, and so now Satan knows he's not going to, to take your eternity away from you. So he just wants to ruin it for you here. To where you don't have any joy, you don't have any peace, and you certainly have no victory in Jesus. And so in the process, in the journey of getting to heaven, that there's no joy and there's no influence in our Christian walk. And, and so what I want you to see first of all today as we think about framing the fight is number one, the beginning of the fight. The beginning of the fight. Hold your hand in Ephesians chapter 6 and I want you to flip over in the Old Testament to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to go back to the beginning of how this spiritual struggle that we're all a part of, how did it begin? In Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, we hear the story of Lucifer. Lucifer was the worship director in heaven. He was the one whose responsibility it fell on him to tell everybody, hey, it's about God. Everything's about God. God is awesome. God is worthy. God is holy. That was the purpose of the worship director then, and it's the purpose of the worship director today, is that we would say at the end of this time of worship, we want you to see Jesus. We want you to know how awesome and great God is. So here's this angel, Lucifer, who has been tasked with, hey, angels, let's all just worship God. And this is the story that follows. In Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 15, the Bible says this, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Here is this angel, Lucifer, the worship leader of heaven, who one day realizes as he's leading the throne, and worship of God, it, it came up, well, maybe I want to be worshipped. 
You know, I'm sort of tired of bowing down to God. Wouldn't it be awesome if people bowed down to me? And so this angel, Lucifer, at that very moment when that thought entered his heart and mind was cast out of heaven and down to a place called Sheol, hell. And, and, and the fact is that as a result of that, the, the crux of this whole issue of the spiritual mind, of, of the spiritual battle comes down to two very important things. The first thing is pride. If you'll read through that passage again, just notice how many times as Lucifer is pondering this thought, how many times he uses the personal pronoun, I. I want this. I wish it was like this. I desire this. And friend, the, the crux, the essence of every spiritual battle in our lives is, am I going to let God be God or do I want to be God? Do I want God to be on the throne or do I want to be on the throne? Listen, when we have a bad attitude, that attitude comes down to, do I want God to be on the throne or do I want to be on the throne? And I'm telling you, I, I feel that. I struggle with that. Of do, do I want to, 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 for God to shine through my life or do I want to have my way? And there's just times, just in recent days, that, that, that I've, I've caught myself saying, that's not like Jesus. That's just not like God. That's not who He wants me to be. And, and, and so as a result, sometimes we have to go and apologize. We have to say, you know what? That's wrong. That's not like Jesus. I, I don't want to be that way. God, change my heart. And, and, and if we don't allow God to change our heart and, to, and to, to do that work in our life, we're going to look up and we're going to realize that we're missing out on what God has for us. So it's a matter of pride. It's a matter of control. Do I want to be in control or do I want God to be in control? Here's what I find in my own life. It's when I'm in trouble, I want God to be in control. Amen. But when it's good, I'm good to be in control. And God says, no, I don't want to just be in control on the tough days and on the hard days. I want to be in control always. Amen. And so the beginning of the fight is a struggle between will God be worshipped or will I be worshipped? Is it going to be all about God or is it going to be about me? And friend, don't miss this. All the way back in Genesis chapter 3, when uh, Satan first appears to Adam and Eve, the way he approaches them is he says, you know, did God say you can't eat the fruit? And, and, and Eve says, oh no, he said we can eat the fruit except from that one tree. And, 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 but why can you not eat the fruit of that one tree? And, and, and she told the, the snake, the serpent, what the answer was is that, you know, that God said it's not good for us to eat that. And here's what he says in Genesis chapter 3. No, 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 that's not right. He says, God knows if you eat of that tree, you'll become like him. The very thing that Satan wanted, that Lucifer wanted and became the devil, he used on Adam and Eve to say, hey, but if you eat this, your eyes are going to be open. And boy, were they. They were opened all right but not in the way they want it. And, and listen, Satan is still using the same tactics today. And you know why? Because it still works. 
Because he knows within every one of our hearts there is a struggle with the pride. There's a struggle with control. And the devil says, hey, you can have it all. But be careful when you want it all. Because that means you get it all. The good, the bad, the ugly, the demonic, all of it. And, and so we need to be able to frame the fight. This is a spiritual struggle. And, and, and it, it is a battle between the devil and God. It is a battle between evil and holy. And, and we are called in the middle. And like I said, just because you're saved does not mean you're exempt from the battle. I would say to you that if you're trying to live for God, you're trying to serve God, the heat will just continue to get turned up. Amen. Yeah, but you know why? Because the enemy knows what God wants to do in you. The enemy know, knows what God wants to do through you. And so he is trying to diminish your impact and your effectiveness for the kingdom. So that's the beginning of the battle. Number two, I want you to see the struggle. The struggle. Again, back there in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, where we started off. And verse 12, he says this. Ephesians 6 and verse 12. The struggle that we have. He says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly places. Now here's what I want you to see this morning. Unless you wrote it in there yourself, it does not say your struggle is against your mother-in-law. Okay. Now, you may have wrote it in there yourself, okay? And maybe penciled it in, all right? My battle is against Susie May, all right? I, mean, I hope that's not your mother-in-law's name. But, but the fact is that, that we will say my struggle is against my co-worker. My struggle is against this person. And listen, if you've been at Havenwoods any time, you've heard me say this. If you can see and touch and feel someone, you know this. They're not your struggle. Amen. That is not your struggle. We need to hear that. I need to hear that. Amen. You know why? Because we fight one another. Amen. When we get mad. We get angry. We get bitter. We get resentful towards one another. And you just need to be able to stop and say, you know what? My battle's not against you. So, so, so I'm not going to take it out on you. And I'm not going to be ugly to you. But I'm going to take that battle to my knees. That, that I'm going to deal with this struggle in a godly way. Because in John chapter 10 and verse 10, God reveals to us, Jesus is speaking... And he says, this is the devil's game plan. In John 10 and verse 10, the Bible says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I came that you might have life. And that you might have it abundantly to the full. So you see the contrast? The enemy is coming to hurt you. He is coming to, to aggravate you. Are you feeling aggravated? Are you feeling irritated? You know, uh, it, it, you, are, are you just struggling with some stuff in your life and it's like, I'm just, it's just a nagging thing in your heart and life. Well, God didn't do that. That's not God that's causing you to feel that way. That's the enemy. And you've got to acknowledge that's the enemy nipping at my heels. And, 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 but God says, I want you to have life. And I want you to have it abundantly. Another verse, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible reminds us, challenges us 
about this battle that we're going through when it says be sober minded be watchful don't let your guard down he says your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour you ever watch those uh, shows on uh, Nat Geo Wild. I, I love watching those shows. And, you know, there'll be a lion out there prowling around uh, in the Sahara. And, and, and there'll be some little antelopes out there or something uh, out there at the watering hole. And, and those lions will be standing off at a distance. And all they're looking for is which one is the weakest. Which one is the easy pickings? And they just wait for their opportunity to pounce. Friend, our enemy, the devil, is watching us. Now, the good news is, he's not God. He doesn't know everything. That's why I say, be careful with what you say. Because every time you open your mouth and say something, you're giving the enemy ammunition. Amen. You're giving him information that he didn't already know. Okay? And so, so we need to understand that he is listening and he is watching. And, and, and when we are weak, he knows that. He's going to pounce on us. He's going to try to steal and kill and destroy us. So let me ask you. What's the enemy stolen from you? We used to sing a chorus years ago. And, and, and I think we even did it here. Whenever we were here the first time. But, but it, it went like this. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. Friend there's time. It's time. For some of us in this room to quit laying down and taking our whipping from the enemy. And it's time for us to stand up and say, you know what? What he stole, I'm taking back. I'm taking back ground for God. And again, I'm not doing it in my power. I'm not doing it in my strength. But I'm doing it in the power of my God. Who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask. Or even think, what's he stolen from you? Has he stolen years from you? Years that you could have been living for God. Years that you could have been serving God. Years that you could have been invested in the kingdom of God. And you look back with regret for lost time, lost service, lost giving to the Lord. Has he stolen your peace from you? Listen, God gives us peace with God when we come to Jesus. But friend, he also gives us peace of God in our circumstances. And the enemy looks at us and says, I can't steal that peace with God. But I want to rob them of the peace of the Lord. In their circumstances. In their, and you know what that looks like? I'm scared to death. I'm worried. I don't know what's going on. I can't sleep at night. I can't get no rest. I, I, I worry and fret about everything under the sun. Fred, you are a child of God. Amen. You quit worrying like a lost person. You quit living like a lost person. You quit hoping like a lost person. Our hope is in the Lord. And God says it's going to be okay. Hey, you with me? God says it's going to be all right. Has he stolen your joy? So many people who name the name of Jesus have no joy. There's no joy in their life. Everything is bitter. Everything is miserable. And because of that, we, we cause our families and our friends to be miserable. Friend, that is a spiritual struggle. 
Has, has the enemy stolen your family from you? You may be cohabitating together, but are you experiencing a godly family? It's time to stand and fight for our families. It's time to stand and fight for our marriages. Don't you lay down. Stand up in the Lord. And I promise you, there will be days I need to go back and watch this message myself. Because our temptation is just to lay down. And just say it's not going to get up. God, just let me come on to heaven. You'll go to heaven when He's ready for you to go to heaven. But until He calls you home, there's work to do. So let's get to work. This is what I find when I'm working, I don't have time to worry. I don't have time to look around and worry about what's going on in their life and what's going on in their life. You know why? Because God's got something for me. That's the struggle. My battle is not against flesh and blood. And listen, we will be wise to understand this is a spiritual struggle that we're in. And if you know Jesus today, Friend, he wants to give you the strength and the power to overcome. And that's the third point I want you to see in this message today. The strength. He says there in Ephesians 6 and verse 10 again. His opening phrase here, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Listen, don't be strong in your wisdom. Don't be strong in your physical abilities. Be strong in the Lord. And listen, the way we get strong in the Lord is to live in His Word. We don't, we don't just, you know, have a little snack from time to time. Sometimes we, we have a discussion at our house about. You know, Lori will be wanting to have a meal at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And she thinks because we have a, a meal at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we don't need supper. Amen. <laughs> no, it's not over. Because <laughs> we get three meals a day in Jesus' name, you know. And here's what she'll say, oh, I'll just eat a little snack. I don't want a snack. I want a meal in Jesus' name. Rocking this macronium. Maybe I don't need a meal. But the fact is that, that we, we, we want to trivialize that and say, well, hey, I can just live on a snack. Some of us spiritually are living on a snack from Sunday. We're living on a snack from Wednesday night. And listen, friend, that ain't going to get it. You want to know why you're getting your spiritual tail handed to you every day? It's because you're not spending time in the holy word of God that the Bible says His word is life to us. It's not optional. We've made the disciplines of a spiritual life just something that we can take or leave. Not if you want victory, you won't. You've got to stand on this word. This word's got to be living and powerful and active in your life. And there's some of you right now, I understand you don't like this. You don't like hearing this because this is truth. But this is life and death that we're dealing with today. And his word is true. And listen, you better get in the pages of this word and you better get on your knees before God and call out say, God, I am weak, but your word says when I am weak, you are strong. And your word says the joy of the Lord will be my strength. God, right now, I'm not singing glory, hallelujah. But God, I need your strength and my weakness. Whose strength are you dependent on in your life? Ephesians 5 and verse 18, just a few verses 
before this passage in Ephesians 6. Ephesians 5.18 is a key to our battle plan. He says, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. That word debauchery there means extreme indulgence and bodily pleasures in the flesh. He says, don't get drunk with wine because that means your flesh is in control. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you've ever been drunk with wine or any other substance, you know this. One of the keys to that is you're not in control. You lose control. You give your control over to that substance. And what he's saying is, don't be controlled by your flesh. But he goes on and says, but be filled with the Spirit. But it is impossible to be full of the Spirit and full of yourself at the same time. So who's in control in your life? Who is the strength of your heart and life? 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. We're going to close with this scripture. And, and this week, you may just need to write this on a post-it note and slap it somewhere where you can see it regularly to be reminded of this truth. He says, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. We used to sing it. Greater is he that is in me. Fact is, greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Amen. Our God is greater. Our God is greater than whatever problem you're dealing with. You may be thinking, hey, I'm overwhelmed. I I'm overcome. In this situation, I don't know what to do. God does. God knows where you are and He knows what you're going through. And not only does He know the answer, He is the answer. And so for us to be able to say and understand that God is greater than any addiction. I don't care what you're dealing with. and I guarantee you there are people in this room and people who are watching my video right now that are dealing with addiction in some way. You need to know that you can be free. The Bible says, Jesus said, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You can be free. Quit by the lie that it's never going to change. Quit buying the lie that this is just the way it's going to be and I've just got to adapt to it. No, God did not create you to adapt. He created you to be conformed to His image. God is greater than your bitterness. God is greater than your unforgiveness. God is greater than your resentment. Listen, there are people in here right now. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. And I'm telling you, friend, you can either let that wound fester and just consume you. Or you can allow the Holy Spirit to cut that open and let it go. So you can be free. So you can experience what God has for you. He's greater than bitterness. He's greater than resentment. He's greater than lust. He's greater than pornography. It's rampant in our culture and in our society today. But God is greater. If that's your struggle, I want you to know God can set you free. You don't have to live in that, in that defeat. But God wants to set you free. Ultimately, God is greater than your sin. He is greater than anything that you could ever do to hurt and wound Him by your disobedience. God is greater than that. And most of all, God is greater than your past. That it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. The ground is level at the cross. 
You can come to Jesus today. You can be saved today. You can be set free today. Christian, you can have victory today. You can have freedom today. And it's not found in Havenwood's Baptist Church. And it's not found in your membership here. It's found in Jesus. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And today, He wants you to be free. He wants you to live free. He wants you to be free in your heart. He wants you to be free in your home. He wants you to be free from your addiction, from your, from your struggles. He wants to set you free. So as we close this morning, I'm just going to ask you to bow your head with me. And as you bow, I want to ask you here in this room and those who are watching my video right now, do you need Jesus? Because, friend, you will never be free without Jesus. He is the key. And this morning, if you're in this room or you're watching by way of video, and God, the Holy Spirit right now is speaking to your heart and telling you, this is the day. For you to drive down a stake and say, I'm not going to fight this battle anymore, but I am giving this to God. I am fully surrendering my heart and life to Jesus. Friend, if you need salvation today, right now you can call on the name of the one who paid the price for your sin and for your rebellion. He'll set you free today. So if you're watching right now or listening right now and God's speaking to your heart about salvation, I want to just encourage you right now to call on Jesus. Just to tell Him, God, I'm sorry for my sin, my disobedience to You. And just to be able to say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior and I confess my sin to You and I want You to be my Savior and my Lord. I surrender my heart, my life, my all to you. I'm tired of being defeated. I'm tired of being discouraged. And today I walk in the victory of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. And friend, in this room, if you just made that confession to God, we're going to give you an opportunity in just a moment to step out and say, today I gave my life to Jesus. And we'll rejoice, we'll have a party with you for the fact that you've given your life to Christ. But for those who are watching by way of video, if you have prayed that prayer and you gave your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you to send me an email from rickywhite at gmail.com and I promise you we'll pray for you, we'll encourage you, we will help you if you need a Bible. We'll send you a Bible. Whatever we can do to help you grow in your new faith in Jesus. Listen, you may never be able to darken the doors of Havenwood's Baptist Church, but we can encourage you. We can be a church family to you. We can, can love on you and help you. And so I, I want you to do that. If you have a prayer need, if there's something going on in your life that you need us to agree with you and pray for you about, then you can, again, just send me that, rickywatt at gmail.com, and I promise you we'll minister to you in any way that we can. But right here in this room this morning, I ask you, friend, what is God calling you to do? What is it that God is asking you to do today?